What's up? I'm Ashley, and we're going to be talking about the regime episode one. So let's get into it. We see the palace manager, Agnes, waiting for Zubak to arrive. And as she's waiting for him to arrive, she pulls up this article that says Butchers of Site 5. Zubak was one of those butchers. The Butchers of Site 5 are a group of soldiers who went to kill 12 protesters for protesting against the cobalt mine. And even though cobalt is something that's good for the country because of all of the money that it brings in, but it wasn't good for the people living around that area. It gave them dirty water and polluted air. Agnes brings him inside the palace where they give him a rundown on what he's going to be doing. We find out that he has been reassigned and that he's going to be working for the chancellor because she actually selected him herself. They tell him about the moisture problem, which is the mode all of the allergens and how they're going to be doing renovations all for the chancellor. They give him this little pen, tell him to not breathe in her direction, to stay calm and to not vomit. Goes in to meet the chancellor and he was looking like he could be in love a little bit. We gonna see. We find out that he's from Westgate and that both of his parents have died. The chancellor says mine too. They all did. She tells him that she selected him because she wanted a site five boy. She tells him don't be ashamed. You soldiers just reacted. I was right by sending you boys down to that mine. So she's the one that sent them down there to kill those people. While everybody's mad at them and not her. She dirty. She tells him that she feels like they've met before somewhere. Or maybe we've seen each other in a dream. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. i never seen you before in my life, lady. She then tells him that his job is to carry around this hydrometer that measures humidity in the air. He's supposed to follow her around and let her know if there's any mold nearby. I would say, do I have to? Because I don't want to do that. But he's just like, okay. He walks out and he tries to shake Susan's hand. Susan's like, uh-uh, don't touch me. We don't shake hands around here. And don't you dare try that with the Chandler. Don't touch her. She don't want nobody to touch her. Matter of fact, you let everybody know. Don't touch her, okay? And then before leaving, she calls him butcher. Just trying to be rude and disrespectful because of how he went in there and killed all those people. But with him being so calm makes me believe that he's about to get wild real soon. Agnes takes him to his room and tells him that he's going to start first thing tomorrow morning. And in the meantime, he's going to be memorizing the floor plan and the schedule for tomorrow. And before leaving, tells him to invest in some moisturizer because the dehumidifiers turn your skin into a mummy's asshole. Agnes is my favorite already. She's funny and she don't got time for none of y'all games. She don't got time for that. Hurry up and get to work and let's move on to the next thing. Right after she leaves, he throws up. Now, didn't they just tell you not to do that? Zubak finds this note in his room from the chancellor that says, see you in my dreams. And that's a whole lot of weird. That's a little creepy. Then he sees that the chancellor is on TV and she's talking about how they just defeated Chancellor Edward Keplinger, which is some man. And she starts talking about how she took on this position with a heavy heart and about how she loves everybody, which sounds like a lie. It's the next day and Zubak gets the call to get over there and get to work. You got 20 minutes. So he decides to do some push-ups with his time and to beat himself in the chest like a monkey or something. He got a problem with that because we see him do it again. He got some issues. Agnes is taking him to the chancellor's room, but as they're walking over there, she tells him that if she says she smells mold, then you say you smell it too. Then she starts telling him about what his job actually is, carrying around that little stick and telling her the humidity and all that and to just make sure you do it right. Zubak meets with the chancellor and as they're walking over to the garden, he lets her know that moisture is 31%. He getting to work. Once they're in the garden, this man with this suit on, I don't know his name yet, is giving her the rundown for the day and he's telling her that they're waiting for her to finalize the cobalt partnership but she just huffs and puffs and walks away her and zubak walk back inside the palace and there she go being weird again she said that place we met where was it he said last night so he over there playing along too she said yes my love our dream don't you remember oh girl what he said sugar beets yes my love sugar beets they both got some screws loose before she walks inside of this room for this meeting, the people inside are like, put a mint in your mouth. 
take short breaths, mouths closed. I'm like, what is going on? And we find out later what's really going on. So they walk into this office and she's sitting down and she's like, let's get to work. Let's make these briefings brief. Hurry up. They tell her that the CEO will be sitting at her table tonight with his wife. And it will be ideal if we can move towards closing this cobalt deal. But she's thinking twice about signing this deal because she thinks that it would make her look weak. And everyone in the room agrees with her. Then they try to manipulate her and gaslight her by saying, once you sign this deal, then we can get back to making this palace safe and the air around you safe. Because, you know, she wants the air clean. She ends the meeting by saying, we'll see what happens and she gets up and walks out with her little bouquet. She goes to visit her dad in the palace. And now remember, he's dead. Both of her parents are dead. But she's keeping him inside of this glass coffin and she starts talking to him. She tells him, I won't feel guilty for throwing a party for Victory Day because I know you hated parties. But I don't. So, and anyway, all girls love to dress up. So this is a reason for me to dress up. She starts rambling on about how she won the chancellorship and how he never even came close. Some daughter you are. She points out how he now has spots on his face. And how they weren't there before. Who gonna tell her? Y'all gonna tell her? Or do I have to tell her? I'll tell her. Girl, he is dead. That's not all that's about to change. You got the man locked up in a glass coffin. She goes to the doctor. And she's freaking out about mold being everywhere. And the doctor reminds her about her AAT deficiency that she inherited from her father, which means she's a high risk at getting lung disease. The doctor puts her inside of this machine that helps with air and oxygen and all that. And she's like, this not enough, where's my pills? Then we get to her husband having an interview with Vogue. The husband's talking about how there's a lot more surveillance going around on all the private citizens. And that all that trouble revolving around the site five was an isolated incident. Chandler is getting ready for the banquet tonight and she's complaining to Zubak about how exhausting it is and how she would like to pour soup on everybody's head. Zubak said, me too. I wish I could do that too. She said, really? So they're bonding over wanting to hurt people. Her eyes lit up like a Christmas tree. She said, well, you're with me the whole night. Keep that humidity in check and that filthy air away from me. Yes, okay. We get to the banquet and she get up there trying to sing. Everybody looking at her like, oh, girl, get down. But once she gets done, they all stand up, start clapping, give her a round of applause, a standing ovation. They all fake. Except for Zubak. He was looking like he was in love. She gets off stage and she meets the CEO, Mr. Kaiser, and his wife. Kaiser goes in to shake the Chandler's hand and Zubak does his job and stops it. But since Chandler doesn't want anybody to know she's crazy, she plays it off and shakes the man's hand. He then tells her humidity is at 40%. Kaiser's like, what is he talking about? What's going on? She's like, oh, it's just a joke. So she is embarrassed. That on top of them getting Mr. and Mrs. Kaiser's order wrong because they only eat fish. With that on top of her husband telling Mrs. Kaiser that he met his wife in medical school in Paris, but that he had a wife and a baby at the time. But Elena is very persuasive. Elena is the chancellor. He said after school, she went to pursue politics and that he went home to his wife and kid, but that Elena thought that marriage would help her campaign. So she asked me to propose. So I did. And I left my wife and my kid back in Paris and I haven't seen them since. What is going on? Why would you say that? Why would you tell her this? What made you tell her that? This is just showing how dirty Elena is and how weak and dumb her husband is. So now this is making the chancellor even more embarrassed and she decides to take out her embarrassment on Jubat. She takes him to the back and starts hitting him in his face. And as she's hitting him, she's like, look at me. She wants him to look at her while she's hitting him in the face. Lunatic. And she's telling him at the same time, look what you did. You're embarrassing me. They all think I'm crazy. You are crazy. Why did he let her slap him around like that? He didn't even try to grab her hand to stop her or nothing. She gets back to the table and she's telling Mr. Kaiser, we love America. We want to work with y'all. You pay for the pits and the refineries. It'll be the perfect partnership. He's like, all right, we'll get the 30% stake in the mining rights like we agreed on. But eventually, we're going to want 51%. She's like, hold up now. So you're telling me if I wanted to do anything with this cobalt, 
then I would have to ask you first. He's like, oh, it won't be a problem. We'll be more than fair. Liar. And during this whole conversation, Zubak is overhearing this whole thing. And he's standing back there looking suspicious. Zubak gets informed that he is now demoted because he embarrassed her. He is now the night moisture sentry for the residence floor meaning he waves that wand around in the air for moisture and mold and all that from 12 a.m to 6 a.m and he'll never see the chandler's face again we see him doing his new job he's walking down the hall with that stick in the air and as he's doing so he's saying kill yourself westgate trash over and over again and beating his chest somebody help him as he's walking down the hall he notices that this window is open so he starts trying to investigate and as he's doing so, he hears this noise come from the Chandler's room. A man is sitting on her bed, breathing abnormally hard and he's there because he wants to kill her. We saw this same man in the palace before looking out of place, but he was probably just in there trying to find a way to break in and out. So when she turns on this light, Zubak notices this. So he goes in there and busts open the door and he starts beating this man down. An alarm goes off and everybody runs inside the room trying to see what happened. Elena is now freaking out. She's like, I breathe him. I breathe him. She ain't trying to smell nobody. They had to put her on an oxygen mask. We then jump to two weeks later and we see that Zubak now has his job back. And he's waiting on her hand and foot. Now she's isolated away from everybody, even her husband. But her husband does come to check on her. He wants to see her. And Zubak is like, is she expecting you? And he's like, I'm her husband. He's like, is she expecting you? He's not trying to get demoted no more. Elena is overhearing all this and she's like, it's okay, let him in. When he gets inside, he starts telling her about possibly making a short-term plan because she hasn't done anything for two weeks. Ever since that man went in there trying to kill her and she had to breathe him in. So she's having a whole meltdown. She's still in there with her mask on. She ignores what he says and she starts talking about how her father now has spots on his face that he didn't used to have before. And he's like, well, yeah, he's been dead a year. Don't you think it's time to let him go? She said, I have. No, you didn't because he's still in there. He's still in there. I just want to know where's her mother at. So the whole reason why she's acting like a drummer phobe, to say the least, is because this whole thing is hereditary and she's afraid of getting lung cancer like her dad. So she finally leaves the room and when she does, she's in this glass box she looks ridiculous look at her sitting up in there she ends up having this meeting where we find out that the man who broke inside of her room was a former cobalt miner turned builder they also tell her that the renovations that's going on in the palace has to be put on hold and tells her she'll have to go stay somewhere else in the meantime and that they were unable to stop her father from his failing lungs so we want to help you. We want to save you with your lungs and get you out this house while we work on this cobalt deal. So they over there being shady. After that conversation, she tells Zubak that he's here because he's a nobody girl. But don't get offended because that means I trust you. And you're the only person who can tell me what the nobodies want. After her making him tell her he loves her, he tells her that she was in his dream last night. What's going on with these dreams? He told her, everybody out there be talking about you saying how you dance for foreign cash. They don't tell you to your face, but that's what they be saying about you behind your back. America wants you to fail. Everybody wants you to fail. And that doctor you got is telling you you're sick when nothing wrong with you. Something is killing you, but it's not the air. It's not this mold. It's them because they want something that you have that they don't got. After that, she put a little pep in her step and she got on national TV and let everybody know that one of her government's top ministers, along with key members that's walking around in her house, conspired against me with some builder who tried to come in my house and kill me. These people have weakened the economy and my immune system. They was making me sick, which is why she's issuing an executive order to repair their debt and turn away any American investors. She kept going on and on about what these people did while her husband was sitting back there looking suspicious. I think he was probably one of the people trying to kill her. She ends that long rant with, I bless you all and I bless our love always. She just be sitting up there lying. She don't love y'all. She don't love nobody. These are some of the people she was talking about. Susan and this bald-headed man right here. 
they got fired. They got thrown out the palace. I really liked this episode. I'm not really sure where it's going, but I'm looking forward to the next one. But y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments so we can talk about it. And if you haven't already and want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in my next one.